May of 2019 in Charlotte, North Carolina. A woman calls 911 because, well, listen for yourselves. Bears County, 911. Yes, sir, I've been bit by a rabbit fox and he's still in my yard. He got one of my dogs. You, well, you got bit by a rabbit fox? What's, what's your address? Yes, sir, he got 74 right, hit his... by the driveway. The and, driveway is by the two big barns. Okay, and you said it killed your dog also? I don't know. I can't I can't get my... Uh, I thought he had one of my dogs, but the one I thought he had is in the house. I saw him in the yard, and I tried to get the dogs in. He's still in the azalea bush beside the house. I can hear it, but I couldn't, couldn't get to him. I hit him with... A uh, two by four, a couple times to get him off of me and my dog. Okay, and are you bleeding? Where were you bit at? Yes, sir, on my leg. He got my Achilles tendon. Okay. How old are you? <laughs> how old what are you? do I do? Now, how old are you? I'm fi I'm fifty two. Fifty two. Just stay. You're inside now, right? Um, yeah, I'm standing here on the porch watching to okay. see if it comes out again. Okay. I hit it pretty hard in the head a couple times. Okay. <sighs> and is there any serious bleeding? Um, well, it's bleeding pretty good. Okay. And it's just is it just from your Achilles heel? Yeah. As far as I can tell, I've been trying to find my dogs. I had not really looked at me. <laughs> so you, do you have any dogs missing? I I don't know. I can't get them to come out from under the bed, the ones that uh, I got in the house. I got you. And I thought I'd better call first. About And what kind of injuries do you have? Like Is it like just superficial or is, is it like severe? Like is, how... No, no, it's just puncture wounds, as far as I can tell, as as on can. both sides of the, the leg there. Okay. It bit me a couple times before I could beat it off. Okay. Son of a bitch. Okay, we, we, have a de we have a deputy about to pull up right now, okay? Just uh, make sure you stay up on the floor. I'm in my nightgown and everything. Okay, and yeah, what, okay. you said the fox is in the bush. What kind of bush? Or where's the bush exactly? It's an azalea bush, and you uh, you just hear it. You can't see in there. You can't see in there? There are 40 or 50. No, there's like 50-year-old azalea bushes. You can't see through them. Okay. You need, I mean, you're sure it's definitely in there, right? Oh, yeah. I hear him in there. You hear him in there? I did hear it moving around in there, yes, sir. And that's where it ran to, you know. But it came up to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's sick. Okay, well, well, so why do you think it's sick? Was it drooling or stumbling? Well, or it, it, it was sort of staggery and, and thin, real thin. And even with the dogs barking at it, it kind of had it. If you're facing your house, is the bushes, the fox to the left or to the right? To the If I'm facing my house from... 601, the yes. bushes are to the left. To the left, okay. Correct. I'm the little gray house with the purple shutters down at the bottom of the hill. There's a big white house and two big beautiful barns. You That's say, John you say you're, you're in the what house? The little gray house with purple shutters. I'm at the bottom of the driveway. That white house, the, the man is deceased. Okay. Oh, jeez. How the hell could afford rabies vaccine? Oh, can what? Who the hell can afford for rabies treatment? Uh, I don't have insurance or nothing. Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, the officer should be pulling up now. Do you see him outside anywhere? No, not yet. Okay. I'm going to go out the driveway. Well, Hang on. Yeah, don't go outside too far. We don't want the fox to get you again. No, I don't see him. 
he he's uh he, he you're down that dirt road, right? Or that dirt road or right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, that first T should be right near that first little building on the right. Where where's your house in relation to that? Come on down the driveway. Keep on going a little down farther? Yeah, just keep on going. Okay. I still don't see him yet. Come around those barns. Yeah, he, well, he may be parking his car there. He may be walking up. No, I see him now. You see him I now? I see him now. All right, well, I'm going to let you yeah. go, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. When police arrived to the property, the fox actually went for them too. That's when officers have no choice but to shoot and kill the animal. The woman was taken to a hospital and later released with minor injuries. She did, however, continued a series of rabies shots after results from a state lab confirmed the fox was rabid. And she said the attack from this fox was random. She went out to take her dogs for a walk as usual when one of her dogs got into it with the fox and she stepped in to stop the fight. That's when the fox attacked her but managed to get her hands on a 2x4 and whack the rabid animal away. And the dogs, well, they're okay. Thankfully, her dogs were up to date on their rabies vaccines but received booster shots. Man, what a badass lady. I think she handled herself pretty pretty well. I specifically liked when the dispatcher asked her if she was bleeding and she's well actually let me just show you the part here. I have it here. I think it's at minute 130. Minute 130 I believe. And right here. And is there any serious bleeding? Um well it's Bleeding pretty good. Man, what a tough lady. <laughs> I'm also so happy that the dogs survived. Um, I do feel pretty bad for the for the fox though. I'm guessing it was just, you know, hungry or afraid and maybe sick. But yeah, what would you do if you get attacked by a fox? I mean, they're really small, but god damn they're so ferocious. They're they're tough little creatures. Anyway, let's uh, move on to the next call. September 2022 in Buford, Georgia. A man who witnesses a robbery calls 911. Um, before we listen to this 911 call, I just want to say that this is a great example of what to do when calling 911, especially when it comes to dealing with really tough and chaotic situations. Um, let's take a listen. When at 911, hey, there's, there's an armed robbery taking? taking place right now at Macy's. He's Where at? At Macy's. At which mall? Uh, mall of Georgia. Uh, okay. He's in a he's in a silver. Toyota pickup truck. He just busted through all the windows and glass, and he's taking off right now. Okay, okay. windows and glass of what? The Macy's and the, the display case at the jewelry counter. Come over here. Did he have he's a weapon? Off. Yeah. Okay. He took the tag off of his truck. Okay. So he, did he throw it on the ground? I don't know. He took the tag off his truck. It's a gray Tundra single cab. He's taking off right now. Passing by Dillard. Sorry, I'm that scared me. Passing by Dillard? Yeah, heading towards towards the Hooters. Right now, it's uh, tinted windows. Looks to be a Hispanic male. 5'10", 5, 5, you know, 5'11", something like that. Had a mask and a, and a hat on. Okay, Hispanic male? Yes. And he's, he's about to get, he's passing in front of Hooters right now. Heading towards Smaller Georgia Boulevard and Buford Highway. Buford Drive? Yeah. What color was his hat? Black. And what about his mask? Uh, I mean, I, I was in the store with my wife. We ran out. It was grayish in color. Okay. And um, he's headed towards um, Buford Drive? Yeah. From Molly Georgia Boulevard? That is correct, yes. And, and now I'm out of sight. Was anybody we injured, in, sir? 
not that I'm aware of. I grabbed my wife when we ran out of the store. We were at the Lens Crafters just inside in front mm -hmm. of the makeup, uh, excuse me, in front of the jewelry. What type of gun did he have? I didn't, uh, he had a large pipe in his hand, and it looked like he had something on his hip that appeared to be a weapon, but I couldn't tell. And he had a backpack. Okay. Do you think it was a gun on his hip? I do, but I, don't, I can't confirm that. Had a piece of galvanized pipe. Okay. There's uh, another gentleman who's also calling uh, 911 at the moment. Okay. We don't have, need anybody else unless he has a visual on him. What is your name? My name is... And your phone number, please? Someone, I'm just being told, one of the Macy's said some uh, worker got stabbed. Somebody got stabbed? Can you confirm yes, that, please? Yes. No. Um, uh, did you say someone got stabbed? Yeah. Someone did confirm someone got stabbed. Tell you anything about the victims that got stabbed? I know you're not I'm, inside, I'm looking sir, at, uh, I'm looking. He's losing a lot of blood. He's laying on the ground. They, they're trying to triage him with some paper towels and some clothing. Okay. Uh, Anybody, it, can you please take off a shirt, anything? Press, press, uh, that's what, there, there's clothing the and everything. There's clothing and everything around there attempting to triage it right now. It looks okay, like trying can to you just listen to me for so. one second? Just, I yeah. need them to place firm, steady pressure on the wound. Do not yeah. lift it up to look. Just press firmly. If it continues to bleed, you're not pressing hard enough, okay? All right. Tell them those instructions for me. Okay. So right they're, 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 they're applying pressure. And How old is the, the, the victim? I'm sorry, ask the question again. The victim, how old are they, male or female? It's a male, uh, approximately 50 years old, wearing a green shirt. His name is... Uh, his leg is Where is bleeding he bleeding from? His leg, his right lower leg, just below the knee. It looks like the amount of blood that's coming out that they hit a main artery. Okay. We need to get EMS here as quickly as possible. They're coming lights and sirens, sir. I need them to press firm, steady they pressure. Are, they, are, they are doing that, and they've, they've, they've tied a band around his, his leg. Let me get a belt. Yo. Guys, see if you can tie more pressure with a belt. Okay, the other victim, sir, I know that you're worried about him. They're taking care of him. The other victim, are the, where are they stabbed at? It's, 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 it's just the one victim that was stabbed twice. Okay. It looks like he's, he's stabbed in the ribs and the leg. Okay. It's just, I need it's them just, to press firm, steady pressure on both wounds for me, okay? Y'all hear that? Firm, steady pressure on both. Don't lift off. Don't don't look. Just firm, steady. Okay. He's, he's bleeding. He's bleeding real okay. bad. Okay. I know, sir. I need to make sure he continues to breathe for us. If he stops breathing yeah. at any time, I need you to tell me so I can tell you how to do CPR, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm certified in CPR. He's fine right now. He's just in a, in a tremendous amount of pain. Keep his head elevated a little bit and just help him to breathe. He just breathe slow and steady, sir. Help is on the way. My wife. <laughs> is he still breathing okay, sir? Still yes, conscious? He's, he's, he's conscious, alert, and breathing okay. is fine for now. I want you to just kind of teach him how to breathe. Take a deep breath in slowly, out slowly. In slowly, out slowly, okay? Breathe real close. In, real deep in through the nose. Steady, constant, out through the mouth. Just calm down. Help is on the way. Is he at the jewelry counter? Yes. yes. He's directly in front of what was smash and grab. Okay. Just tell him to keep breathing for me, okay? Yep. Hey, just breathe, buddy. No, just breathe. It's okay, man. Tell the people that are applying the pressure to his wounds, if, if, that's, if it's bleeding through those shirts, 
get a different shirt and add it on top of that one. Do not lift it up whatsoever, okay? Will do. Push on top of this one. And if yeah. you can, pull it into your chest to, to provide enough pressure. Do you understand? So even if you have to do it, because you may be able to put more pressure, if you have to put an extra shirt on top of it so you don't get blood on you if you don't want to, okay? Um, I'm, it's, it's, it's You're doing good, sir. Thank you, okay? Thank you for helping him. No worries. They're coming lights and sirens, okay? Like I said, focus on the breathing, in through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Steady, calm. Okay? You're Is calm. the bleeding slowing down at all? It does not appear to be, no ma'am. Okay. More I'm pressure like, for me. More the, pressure. The, Just the I, it may main. hurt him. It may hurt him to put pressure, but as hard as you can, I need you to apply that pressure because he needs that blood inside of him more than him being in heart, okay? You got it. David, everybody, everybody's fine. You did a great job, dude. Breathe. Breathe, buddy. Ma'am, he's starting to go into shock a little bit. Okay. Tell him to breathe for me. If he passes out, I need everybody to stay calm for me. I know it's stressful, but I we'll need do. to know if he continues to breathe. And if not, I need to help you with CPR, okay? Really focus in on your breathing. Don't worry about anybody else, okay? We're all good. You don't want to go into shock, okay? So just breathe. Relax. Relax. Just breathe. Is he still awake? Yes. 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 Okay. Just tell him to keep breathing for me, okay? Is it yeah, the leg, it's still the leg bleeding just as bad, down. right? Okay. The leg is not slowing down at all. It didn't, it, it didn't. Just, just keep trying to put that pressure on for me, okay? I know it hurts him, but as hard as you can, put that pressure on for me. Hey, Adam, pull on the belt as hard as you can, okay? Like we want to cut off all circulation, okay? As much as humanly possible. I know it hurts, baby. Just breathe. Even if, sir, even if y'all have that belt on, I need the pressure being put on it as well, okay, with a shirt or something. Okay, I just needed to make sure. They're on their way. They're pulling in now, sir, okay? They're pulling in right now, Yes, sir. If you can get somebody to the door outside, somebody else, not you. I need you to stay with him. No worries, yes, ma'am. Make sure they go in from the other side, okay? Yeah, if they're pulling in, ma'am, I think it's the wrong entrance. Are you going to tell me what I said, but into the nose, out through the mouth, nice and steady. Okay? Yeah. Is he still awake? Yes, he is. Okay. Is somebody at the door to guide the paramedics in when they get there? Into the nose, out through the mouth, into the nose, out through the mouth. Yeah, good. Okay, look at me, into the nose, out through the mouth, steady your breathe. There you go. There you go. That's good perfect. job. Keep perfect. encouraging him, okay? You're doing a good job. Focus on the breathing. Is he still awake for us, Marcus? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody, anybody else? 
no. What, we got pressure on? We got pressure. We got a, Is that an officer? Yes, ma'am. Is that Dr. an officer? Phillip. It's the police officer, yes, ma'am. He said that okay. was fired in the parking lot as well. There were, but we're just worried about him, okay? Um, but I need you to just take care of him. The officer is going to get the paramedics to him, okay? So, yeah, I think everyone did such a good job here. And because of that, this man actually survived some really serious injuries. He was taken to a hospital, then later released. So, according to reports, this is what happened. A man ran inside of the Macy's and began smashing counters inside of the store with a crowbar and took the jewelry. A Macy's employee, David Walker, tried to stop the thief, but was stabbed. The suspect escaped in a pickup truck, but officers spotted the truck and rammed the vehicle. He then gets out and starts running. An officer chased after him, firing and hitting the man at least once near the DSW shoe store outside of the mall. Police identified the suspect as 27-year-old Jose Reyes Serrato. Jose survived the gunshot wound. He faces charges of armed robbery, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, fleeing a police officer for a felony offense, and second degree criminal damage to property. So this case has a pretty unfortunate ending because David, the Macy's employee who got stabbed, um, well, let me actually just show you this clip instead. Let's take a look. David Walker tells me he expected to be able to come back to work here at Macy's after surviving that stabbing that happened while he was working as the jewelry manager at the store. But he tells me he got a phone call this week letting him know that he violated company policy by getting involved in the robbery. I wasn't trying to protect a ring. I was trying to protect the people I care about. David Walker says he feared that a robber in his store had more than a crowbar and a knife when the thief started smashing jewelry cases inside the Mall of Georgia Macy's. I saw what I thought was a gun. As jewelry manager, he says he thought the suspect was going to shoot someone, so he says he tried to stop him on September 2nd. When I hit him in the back, he immediately did this and stabbed me in the side. Walker says he ended up stabbed five times with a knife, trying to make sure no one was hurt. When you see people you love and the customers you love attacked, something different takes over. Gwinnett County Police shot the suspect, 27-year-old Jose Reyes Serrato, as he tried to get away. Two months later, Walker says he got a call on Tuesday from Macy's, and they told him he's fired for violating company policy by intervening in the robbery. And it's just very disappointing to me that um, they believe that my actions put the store in danger. In a statement, Macy's told me, quote, at Macy's, the safety of our customers and colleagues is always our top priority, and all incidents that put anyone at risk are taken seriously. Per our policy, we are unable to provide any additional information. Walker says he never expected to be out of a job after 18 years with the company. Everything I did was to protect the people in that store. Now the suspect accused of starting this robbery, he survived the police shooting. He's out of the hospital now in the Gwinnett County Jail facing a slew of charges. Yeah, man, I feel so, so bad for him. It just doesn't make any sense. Shouldn't it be the opposite of that, of, you know, getting fired? Like, how about, hey, David, thank you. You know, here's a raise. Uh, take a month off. Yeah, uh, take a vacation, whatever but fired? Come on, man. It's just, I don't know. Just like I said, it just doesn't make any sense. Like not even a thank you, you know, at least do that. Thank you for what you did. But no, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't get it, but shout out to David and shout out to the person who made that now my call. I believe his name was Marcus and uh, the dispatcher too. And yeah, it was pretty much a a group effort you know everyone did their best and like i said i think they did pretty damn good and uh yeah they kept david alive which is awesome and amazing and again i feel really bad for him because he shouldn't have gotten fired but yeah let's move on to the next one October 16th, 2022, in Fremont, Michigan. A man by the name of Anthony calls 911 
and tells the dispatcher some really strange things. Let's find out what that is. Hello, County 911. Yes, hello. This is Anthony John Serigliano, North Michigan Avenue in Fremont, Michigan, 49412. Okay, what's going on tonight? Yes, everyone is okay, but I need the Fremont Police Department and I believe he is Captain Geating, John Geating. I need okay. some police protection immediately. Okay, for what? It is of vital national interest. It is related to September 11th, and people want to erase me from the face of the earth. I am not crazy. Mr. Geating knows me. I'm a Christian. I just need some help, and then the U.S. government will take it from here. I know this sounds crazy. You don't have instructions for this. Please send uh, someone that knows the meeting and can talk to the U.S. authorities, please. Okay. And do you have any weapons there? No weapons at all, not even a BB gun. All right. How do we That's- spell your last name? Sure, it's C-I-R-I-G-L-I-A-N-O. And your phone number? We have no landline. Okay. All right, we'll get them over there for you at 823 North Michigan in Fremont, okay? Okay. Can they come with their lights off and not to frighten my children, please? Yep, definitely. Okay, I'll look for them, a knock on the door, and who, please try to send Mr. Eating, even if he has to be awoke from his sleep. It's that important, yep. please. Yep, he's, he's on right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. When police arrived to the home, everything seemed fine. There was no animosity, no friction, no reason to suspect that anything was wrong and this is what police chief tim rodwell said my officers talked with him at length and just were concerned about his mental well-being they made contact with his family and they seemed fine but this is where things get eerie because on october 16th the family goes missing anthony his wife suzette and their two boys brandon and noah and the grandmother who suffers from dementia was left behind so this is how they found out that the family went missing let's take a look at this i was just shocked to see that like that they left their grandma the family was discovered missing on monday after the grandmother who requires full-time care went to a neighbor's house seeming cold and confused at first, she, she didn't want to go in there alone. We decided to do a, a citizen check well-being, and so we called the cops, and yeah. they came out, and that's how they found out, I guess, uh, that the family was missing. The Ceriglianos had prior contact with police the day before in the early morning hours on Sunday when Anthony called to 911. Officers did go check on the family that night and eventually left the home. She said that her son-in-law it was scared about something. If Tony and uh, Susie can hear this, that they feel comfortable calling us. Fremont police say they have reason to believe that the Cerigliano family didn't leave for a trip or a vacation, and they're urging anyone with information to call the department or 911. Yeah, the grandmother, who again suffers from dementia and needs full-time care, went to a neighbor on October 17th and managed to get some help. She also mentioned that her son-in-law was afraid about something. So at this point, police have no idea of what's happening or where the family is. But on October 17th, the family is seen in a gas station. In gas station surveillance video, Anthony Cerigliano is seen filling up the gas tank of their 2005 Toyota Sienna. His wife, Suzette, and one of their sons enter the store and buy something. As far as distressed or any other issues, 
it, it's really ambiguous to that. Fremont Police Chief Tim Rodwell says it's hard to tell their mood from this video, but it does appear one of the boys attempted to make a phone call. The gas station owner says she reached out to police after recognizing them from earlier in the week, after seeing reports that they're missing. This section of US-2 is between Manistique uh, and what we'll call St. Ignace. Um, it's a really rural area. Fremont police say the family ended up west in the Upper Peninsula at a hotel in Iron Mountain from Monday to Wednesday. We received, um, I would say, approximately a dozen more tips, but we just cannot corroborate any anything out. And according to reports, Anthony, who was self-employed, has no known mental health issues, and police didn't find any signs of foul play, struggle, or violence inside of the home to indicate a suspicious disappearance. So after nearly a week of searching for this family, they were all found safe. The Stevens Point Police Department in Wisconsin found the family at a Baymont Inn motel. Police said the family was very cordial and they understood people's concern about their well-being. Police say when they went to the house, they found an elderly relative who requires full-time help had been left behind, as well as the pets. But there was no sign of the family. The mystery got national attention. An urgent search underway for a missing family of four. The only clue to their whereabouts? This surveillance video showing the family at a gas station after their disappearance. Now the mystery has been solved. Cops found the family at this hotel 300 miles from home. Did you have any conversation with, uh, with, the, with the family about where they were, why they left? It looked to, to be intentional. Uh, and it looked to be without malice. People want to erase me from the face of the earth. Okay, so I couldn't find an actual answer as to why this happened. Like you guys heard earlier in the number one call, Anthony said that there's someone out to get them. And this is the only info that I was able to find that kind of gives us an idea of why this happened and it reads both of the Sirigliano kids are on the spectrum and the dad appeared to be having some sort of crisis it's also unknown if Anthony was on any medication and that's it I couldn't find anything else this case is for sure rather strange again I couldn't find anything else um but I'm glad that no one was injured no one was killed which is always great news um but yeah what do you guys think about this case do you really believe that someone was out to get them or maybe anthony was having a mental crisis let's move on to the next one june 15th 2021 in cedar rapids Iowa. A man by the name of Alexander Jackson calls 911, and you'll see why he's calling. But I really, really want your opinion on this call. Listen to it carefully, rewind it if you have to. This is also an ongoing case. Uh, I believe they're on day six of the trial. That might change by the time this video goes out, but let's just listen to the call. Wind County Sheriff, emergency, emergency. Uh, someone broke into our house. Our address is 4414 Oak Leaf Court, Northeast. I've been shot. My other family member's been shot. I need help immediately. Okay, I'm getting Cedar Rapids on the line here. Uh, I've been shot in the foot. Okay, sir, sir stay, on the, stay on the line. It would need to be answering. Give them the address right away. One what's the address of the emergency? Uh, 4414 Oak Leaf Court, Northeast. Okay, what's going on? There, there's someone broke in. Okay. I've been shot. You've been shot? Right there for sure. Okay, hold on just a second. Are they still there? No, they left. They left? Did they come inside the house? <laughs> yeah. Okay, where were, where were you shot at? Downstairs. No, on your body. On your body, where have you been shot? Foot. I'm sorry, where? Foot. In your foot? foot? Okay, how old are you? Uh, how old are you? 
Twenty. Twenty. Okay. I'm, I've got help coming. Just stay on the line with me, okay? Do you know who it was that broke in? What was that? Do you know who broke in? No. Okay. Did you get a look at them? No. Could you tell if it was a man or a woman? Uh, man. A man? Could you tell if they were white, black, Hispanic? That's okay if you don't know. Just stay on the line with me, okay? What's your first name? Uh, I'm uh, Alex. Alex, does that help come in, okay? Just stay on the line with me and don't hang up, okay? The number I have is I think four. I... I think I spooked him off. You think what? I... I... I'm not even wrong. You're doing just fine, Alex. Just stay on the line with me. What do you think happened? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Is it just your foot? Yeah. Well, okay. That's for me. Okay. Do you have a dry clean cloth or towel you can put on there so we can control the bleeding? Oh. I tried to put a belt on my leg, but it broke. You tried to do a tourniquet and it broke? Yeah. Okay, do you have a, like, a cloth or a towel, a shirt, anything that's clean and dry? I can go get one. Okay, if you can get one, just like, keep me on the phone, okay? Anything will do. Just something that's clean and dry so we can control the bleeding. How, do you know how they got in the house? Uh, the back door, I think. The back door? It's open, so... Okay. I'm not an expert. No, that's all right, Alex. I just didn't know what you saw and what you didn't, okay? We've got them coming, and they're coming lights and sirens. I've got an ambulance coming for you. Uh -oh. You're doing great, Alex. You're doing good. Is anybody else home with you? My sister. Your sister? Where's she at? Her bedroom. And her bedroom is up. Okay, she should be in her bedroom? Yes. Okay. What's your sister's name? Sabrina. Sabrina? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right, Alex. I just want to make sure that we know who's supposed to be in that house, okay? Uh, yeah. Just you and your sister for now, right? Oh. Did you find anything dry? Anything clean that we can put on the foot? I'm trying to put cloth on. <sighs> okay. Just put pressure on where it's bleeding, okay? As much as you can stand. Don't lift it up to look, okay? That's how we're going to control the bleeding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this person that you saw in your house, did they leave out the back door? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the time delay? How long ago was this? <sighs> Uh, okay. Do you remember anything? Ago, okay. I just do you got my phone? Okay. Do you think it was like an hour ago or like five minutes ago? Yeah. You don't know? Ten minutes ago? Okay. That's all right. I understand. You're in some. Okay. Oh. on the radio too, okay? Okay. Do you remember what color shirts or what color hair this guy had? Anything about him? Um, black? You think it was a black male or a black shirt? Uh, both? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> And was it a long gun or was it a short gun, like a handgun? A long gun. It was a long gun? Like a rifle style? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. He says he's a... Okay, I've got him coming right there on Oakleaf Court, so they're almost there. Okay, where are you in...
in the house, Alex? Downstairs. You're in the lower in level? Okay. My room. In your room? Okay. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Are you able? Are you able to to meet them at the back door? Are you able to walk? Uh, if not, just stay in your room. I'm in my room. <laughs> okay, Alex. Is that back door still wide open? Maybe, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell him to come in that back door. Okay. Just you and your sister in the house, right? Yeah. No parents or grandparents, animals? Oh, my mom's here too. Your mom is there too? Yeah. Okay, so you, your sister, and your mom? Yeah. Okay. My dad's here, but... Uh, 4414. <laughs> Do you have a house number? Do you have, like, a phone line? 414. No, like a house, like a it's landline. Like on the corner. Do you have, like, does mom have a cell phone or sister, or do you guys have a house, like, phone, like a landline? Yeah. Or do you, yeah. do you have a landline? Do you know the house phone number? Uh, three, uh, eight, nine, I think so. Okay, that's what you think it is? I can't remember now, so. Ugh. All right, Alex. Do you know if mom and sister are safe? Did the guy go upstairs? Well, I don't see them. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure that, I have you seen your mom? Or you, you hear it ringing? Yeah. The house, the house number is ringing? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's us calling. We're trying to get a hold of sister or mom just to make sure they're safe. <clears throat> I've got officers all around the house. I just want to make sure that I keep you on the line, okay? Nobody's answering that house phone. Are you sure anybody's home? They should be. Okay. <clears throat> Does sister, does your sister have a cell phone? Yeah. Do you know her number by heart? Do you know that? No. Okay. Ooh. You're doing good, Alex. Alex, do you have any weapons downstairs? Any guns, knives, anything like that? No, but there's a no. gun on the floor. There is? That's not yours? It, it's ours, but we got shot by it. So he took your gun and shot you? Yes. Okay. Hold on just a oh. second. Let me make sure. I tell my officers this. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> Very last house on the dead end on the right? No, you're the first house, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Oh. 
So Jackson is accused of killing his mother, Melissa, his father, Jan, and his sister, Sabrina. And according to document records, Jackson, who made the 911 call the morning of the murders, told investigators the day of the killings that someone had broken in and that he'd been shot in the foot while struggling with the intruder over the family's Browning 22 rifle. It is confirmed by investigators to be the murder weapon. Investigators also say there's no evidence that there was anyone in the house and that Jackson's palm prints are clearly on the gun. So the jury is trying to determined if Alexander Jackson murdered his family in cold blood. Right now it looks pretty bad for him and the evidence is clearly against him. An investigator said that there's no evidence whatsoever of a home invasion. Jackson's accused of shooting his mom, dad, and sister inside their Cedar Rapids home in June of 2021. Jackson continuously denies that he killed his family. Instead, he says the person responsible was an intruder who broke into his home. But police say there is no evidence anyone was inside the house except for Jackson and his family. I ran into them. We wrestled. I pushed them maybe me. It's okay. It's okay. 
separate interview later that same night, police told Jackson they pulled the surveillance video from his home. There are no clips of anyone uh, leaving your house. Jackson told them he had no idea there were cameras in the back of the home. They gave him another opportunity to change his story before letting him know he was headed to jail. When you're not going to go home. Okay. You're being charged with murder of your mom, your dad, and your sister. And former friends of Alexander testified in court. Garrett Barton said this. That Jackson was helpful on troop trips and was always respectful to his parents, never displaying violent behavior or anger towards anyone. Um, how long have you known Mr. Jackson? Seven years, about. Where did you guys meet? Uh, scouts and Troop 766. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, scouts and Troop 766. So you guys met as a scout members? Yes. Um, and that was in 2015, you said? Roughly, yes. And did you have any other contact with Alex outside of Scouts? Uh, very little. Did you ever meet Alex's parents? I've met his mother a few times. Uh, she would always help out at the Scout meetings. She always helped with cleaning up afterwards. Uh, his father I only met once, and that was at the Eagle Project. I didn't really get a chance to talk to him, though. Did you ever see Alex and his mother interact? A few times at what, the scout meetings. What did you observe about their relationship? Uh, always kind and respectful. Uh, never really raised his voice at his mom. There were some smart Alec remarks, but I can't pinpoint an exact uh, phrase. But, but for the most part, respectful? Yeah. Did you ever see him be unruly to his mother? No. Ever mean to his mother? Nope. Did you ever notice him being disrespectful to his father? No. And on all these occasions that you were around Alex, did you ever see him act violent towards any other scout members or anyone? No. Any type of, that type of behavior? Um, no uh, violent behavior. Uh, we were competitive at like card games, but nothing like threat wise or physically hurting anybody. And Jared Waker, testified as well. Jared is Alexander's former band director at Cedar Rapids Kennedy High School. He testified to working with Jackson while he played flute in the school's wind symphony. He also spent three years in marching band. Jared described Alexander as a hard worker, very polite, adding that he always seemed to want to do well and that he enjoyed teaching him. But the two hadn't interacted since Jackson graduated in May of 2019. Mr. Wacker, how are you employed? Um, I am a band director in the Cedar Rapids School District. Are you currently at Washington High School? Yes, I am. And did you teach a uh, band anywhere else before Washington? Yeah, I was at um, Kennedy High School for nine years. What was your position at Kennedy High School? Uh, I was one of two band directors there. So wind symphony, is that wind instruments? Yes, these are band instruments. Okay. Yep. The ones you blow into? Yes, right? some, well, most of them, yeah. Some of them you, you hit as well. So. so I'm not trying to be too technical there. No. <laughs> Uh, during, your, during your time at Kennedy, did you become acquainted with Alexander Jackson? I did. And when did you first meet Alex? I met Alex his freshman year, uh, 2015. How would you describe his work ethic? Um, he was a hard worker, um, very polite, um, took suggestions very well. Did he seem interested in the program and improving himself as a player? Yes, he absolutely did. He. He worked hard at that, um, and he, he always seems, seemed to do, or seemed to, to want to do well. And Chris Lyon also testified. Chris testified as a digital forensics expert. He said that in his research, there wasn't any evidence that Alexander never had an app for his family's ring cameras on his phone. Chris was called as a witness late in the case after testimony from CRPD investigator Matthew Denlinger insinuated that Jackson may have tampered with the cameras at the Jackson home prior to the murders. Good morning, Mr. Lyon. Morning. 
Could you um, explain to the jury how you are employed? I work for the Office of the State Public Defender in Iowa City, and um, I'm an investigator, and I also work as a digital forensics uh, specialist. How long have you been working for the Public Defender's Office in Iowa City? Uh, let's see, since 2018, I believe. How long have you worked in the Public Defender system? Uh, just a year before that I started. Okay. And what kind of a job did you hold before that? I was in law enforcement, um, a police officer. I worked for West Liberty uh, Police Department. Were you asked to look at the Celebrite downloads for the phones belonging to Jan Jackson, Melissa Jackson, and Alexander Jackson? Yes. Yeah. And who asked you to do that? You did, sir. And uh, were you asked to look specifically for the Ring app? and any, uh, anywhere it showed up on any of those phones? Yes. And did you do that? I did. Were you able to look at the, um, with respect to Jan Jackson, who would have been the father, and the father's phone, I think, is the way it was referred to in the Celebrite data, were you able to see whether or not the Ring app had been installed on the father's phone? Yes, the Ring app was installed. Okay, and were you able to tell when was the last time the Ring app would have been operated or looked at or used in any way on the father's phone? Yes, um, I looked at something called the application usage log. Um, in Celebrite, you can, uh, the, the iPhone in this case recorded the last time and for how long the uh, specific applications were used. And autopsies revealed that Jan was shot five times in the head, lower neck, and chest. He also had a blunt force injury and deep cuts to his face, potentially caused by falling. Melissa died from two gunshot wounds, one at close range to her head. Sabrina died from a gunshot wound to her torso and left eye. Alexander Jackson faces three counts of murder. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about this one? Um, do you think he's innocent or guilty? On each of as to each of the three counts, um, form of verdict two has been executed. We, the jury, find the defendant, Alexander Jackson, guilty of the offense of murder in the first degree. And Ms. Pearson, are you the foreperson? And is that the verdict of the jury? It is, Your Honor. Or the verdicts of the jury? Yes. Mr. Johnson, would you like the jury polled? Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, at this time, I'm going to excuse you. I'm going to ask that you go uh, with Terry and go back to the jury room. Um, I will be back in just a little bit and uh, um, have a chance to talk to you uh, before we excuse you. But uh, at this point, we'll excuse you and uh, ask that you go back to the, the jury room for a few minutes, okay? All right. But yeah, guys, that's the video. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you if you're a member of the channel and or a patron. If you want to support me, there's always links down below in the description. Um, yeah, take care. Love you again. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I always say this, you know, that I sound like a broken record. But I don't know. I guess it's just my way of saying how much i appreciate you all and um i'm still working on getting better with these videos and editing and writing and yada 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 uh i also want to focus more on the victims instead of the you know the suspects or the murderers um so i'm working on that and um yeah i always do my best to be respectful and um uh, I also hope that people learn from watching these videos and know what to do when calling 911 or maybe you want to be a dispatcher or a police officer uh, or an EMT or doctor or nurse or, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> um, again, thank you for watching. I uh, love you all. Stay kind. 
pass it around always pass it around uh, yeah be safe <laughs>